Konnichiwa, fellow ninjas. We're back for another challenge. This one's entitled Generate Range of Integers. You are to implement a function named Generate Range, taking these three parameters, min, max, and step, which takes three arguments and generates a range of integers from min to max with the step. The first integer is the minimum value, the second is the maximum of the range, and the third is the step, where the minimum will be passed in less than the maximum. So we are to implement a function named generate range. You can see they have the stub for us here. Um, and they give a couple examples with 2, 10, and 2 as um, the first example. They want the integers from 2 to 10 inclusive, where you increment by 2 each time. That's why you get the even numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You're counting by 2s. So you can think of this step parameter as what you're counting by. To give another example, 1 to 10 counting by 3, so you get 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 3 is 10. So I think that's clear. They have some notes. Min will always be less than max. In a real life scenario, we would add some logic to protect against this where you could check if that condition weren't true and if not, then just swap the values around between min and max. You could do it like that, or you could um, tell the user, hey, you, this is poorly formatted input, however you, whatever is appropriate for your application. Uh, and step will always be greater than zero, because you could have a problem there too, right? Imagine somebody tricky passes in zero, or what usually happens in a live environment um, a, a calculation goes wrong and you get passed in a value of zero, not on purpose, but just because something was unforeseen. And then you could imagine if you're going through a loop trying to increment by zero every time and you'd be stuck in an infinite loop. So they tell us not to worry about that, but you would absolutely worry about that in real life. And then finally, the range does not have to include the max. So this will be determined by the step value. So I imagine there are some tests coming that will um, enforce this. Their examples here don't include it. Um, so, but imagine like it was 1, 11, 3. You know what I mean? If you would add 3 to 10, you'd get 13, and that would be past the 11 value. So, um, we'll probably encounter something like that. So, we'll head over to code. You know the drill. For best results, pause the video think about this, make an attempt by yourself, and then resume the video whenever you're ready and we'll go through it together. I'm going to do this in a couple different ways. Uh, the first way I'll do it using my own for loop and kind of iterating over the range. And then secondly, I'll use, I'll try a way using link methods where um, a lot of that stuff is sort of wrapped up for us. And I should probably note we've been using link methods before. And um, just keep in mind that they're doing a lot of that stuff under the hood. It's not that the code is any smaller or necessarily more efficient just because we see one line typed out. You know what I mean? It depends on all the method calls and what they um, result in. So don't think that just because you wrote a solution in, in one line that it's necessarily faster than a solution that's written out using five or ten lines. Could be, it might not be. But anyway, we'll get into it here. Let's do our first one uh, where we kind of do it on our own and don't rely on so many built-in methods. So I think the first step here is to try and determine how many numbers we need in our answer. I'll call that num elements. It's going to be an integer. And so we'll use this uh, 2 to 10 sort of example as an idea just to see if our little um, calculation is going to work out right. So what would it be in that case? How many values would we, we be expecting? We can see clearly in the answer here there are five values if you count from 2 to 10 by evens. So um, if you want, again, pause the video and try and think about how you could determine the number of elements generally. And so the way I do it would be to find the difference between max and min, right, to start. Okay. 
and then what do you have to do with that? We can't just say um, clearly that's not good enough, right? In our example, that leaves us with eight. And the step is not necessarily one. It could be anything greater than zero, any integer greater than zero. So I'm going to divide by the step value. And then where does that leave us in the example? If we did 10 minus two, you get eight divided by two, the step, right, is only four elements. So because of counting purposes, because we're using inclusive bounds here, I'm going to add one to that to get the number of elements. So that should work out we, if you don't believe me, or, you know, I don't even believe me when I'm coding. So let's just put something in to make sure. Console, right line. Num elements equals num elements. Make sure we're on the right track there, right? So next, let's make an array to store our result in. Remember, this is the return type of our function. It's expecting an integer array. So we'll make that collection. Um, int array, we can call it results, call it whatever you like. It's new int num elements. We have to size the array when we create it. So that's good. We have this integer array. When we do it like this, it's sized appropriately. It should probably be initialized with all zeros, being that's the default value for integers. So, okay, we're good there. So now we have our result array that we're going to store the answers in. You can think of it, see how they did it here, new int 246810. We've got that structure, we just need to fill in the 246810, the sort of the values that go in there. So how are we going to do that? Well, we'll use a for loop, and we know the number of elements. We'll start at zero. I is less than number of elements. This will execute number of elements times, remember, because we're starting at zero, and we're going up to one less than number of elements. And we'll increment the index by one every time. Um, and you know what? Well, we'll leave this for now. Okay. So then what do we do inside the loop to populate the result array that we made? Well, result i, right? It's going to start at zero, so it'll start with the first one, and it'll go through each index in order. And we're going to say that's equal to the min value, right? They'll all be at least the minimum value. And then what do we want to do each time? We want to take that and add the step amount, how much we're adding each time, times the index value that we're currently on. So when this is zero, right, i is going to be zero. Effectively, there's no step. And the first result will be two, the min value in two to 10. So you'll get two here. Imagine i increments to one. Uh, min is still two, min is gonna be two every time. But now we're gonna have the step value times one. Uh, the step was two, so you're gonna get two. Uh, min of two, this value two, two plus two is four in your second result. Bump it again, i goes up to two. You're gonna have two plus two times two, which is four plus two is six. And so you can see that kind of uh, generating the values that we need. And really, um, that's gonna do the work. One thing to note, if you didn't, weren't aware, these braces are not necessary if you just have one line associated with the for loop. Some people like to include them anyway, even with one line, as um, either because they like how it looks or it's provisional. If you did need to do something else in this scope, then you wouldn't have to go and type the braces too. Um, but oftentimes I omit the braces when I just have one line. So feel free to follow your style there. And then really, um, we've done our work at this point. If you wanted to be sure, you could um, do another print statement, right? Int n in result. For each integer in result, you could say console, right line, and say value equals. N, 
right? And this should just list all the values we have. You don't have to do that. It's just if you want to see what you're, what's getting output, and then just return the result, right? So I think this covers us here. Um, pretty straightforward there. Calculate the number of elements, initialize an array sized appropriately. Remember, array sizes don't change. Um, it's not like a list. So we got to get that sized right from the start. Go through starting at the beginning, load each element with its appropriate value, starting at min, adding the step each time. And then, yeah, you can check the results here. We'll run the test on it. And there you go. You can see our print statements here. The number of elements was calculated to be five, which is good. That's what we wanted. And you can see all these value lines being printed out, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. This would be more helpful if we run into an error. Um, but yeah. So as I talked about, um, and certainly when we submit our answer, we're going to see uh, the people using the link arrays. And you might be curious about that. One thing I will say, we've been using a lot of the link solutions using their methods, but if you're uncomfortable with for loops or they're not just, um, they don't come naturally to you, you still have to think about them, by all means, you should be doing your own solutions, writing your own for loops until those are really comfortable and you've just got them down completely mastered. But if you still have any kind of confusion with them, I'd recommend writing out your own solutions and then eventually work your way into link and you can appreciate the work that it's doing for you saving you some typing but anyway on to that we'll have another go at this um, using a solution like that so I'll take this out and then the, the thing with using link methods we're gonna have to use one that sort of generates a sequence right and so what we can do for that is a couple I know of. We have one called range. Uh, it generates a sequence of integral numbers within a specified range. You give it a starting value, you tell it how many, and it just adds one each time. And that's kind of nice if you wanted, like uh, I think they do one to 10 here. While well, they're doing squares, you can see how you can transform the output with this select. We'll get to that. But right now we're just focusing on generating the sequence itself. So if you had not included this part, imagine that's not there. This sort of just makes a collection of the numbers one to 10. So, okay, that's cool. Make a sequence that way. We had another option, which I think I'll use in um, our solution. It's called repeat. And you basically, again, generates a sequence that contains one repeated value. So this time you're giving it the starting value um, do they have an example here? Strings. Repeat. Basically, you give it a starting value, tell it the number that you want, and then it just repeats that value. So imagine I said two and five, it would load up the collection with five twos. You know what I mean? Instead of going two, three, four, five, six, you know, like it did in the last example with range. Now it's just repeating the same value. It's just filling your whole collection with the same value. And that's kind of similar to what we did in the for loop before, right? We started with that min value and we are always kind of adding an appropriate amount to that. So that's kind of similar to this. And I'll go ahead and invoke repeat uh, in this. I'm not sure if that's the best way. We'll see when we submit, you know, there's probably some really clever ways. There might be other ways in this um, enumerable these enumerable methods to generate sequences you can look through these and um, yeah explore that's a good exercise so anyway back to it we can say enumerable and before we get too far before we get yelled at for using methods that don't exist let's just go ahead and bring in link if you're wondering how I do that, remember, you can check right at the top here, it says system link namespace. That's where this resides. So I'm adding using system link. Okay, enumerable. I said I was going to use repeat, right? So that's going to be a method. And 
we're again, like our uh, for loop, we're gonna start with the min value, right? And then we want it repeated the number of times, um, the number of answers that we have. So we'll just keep with that two to 10 example, we had five and we've already calculated it here, right? So min two, this is gonna fill it all with twos in that example. So you can imagine at this point, we have that collection filled with all the minimum number, but we have to transform it. And if you remember, when I first showed you the docs page, I was at the select method. We'll go back over there. And this is really handy. Uh, the name might seem weird to you unless you work with databases, but just um, kind of accept that if you can. But it will project each element of a sequence into a new form. You can think of it as transforming your sequence. This is great, right? We don't have to just stay with an array filled with twos. We can modify it. And what's really neat about this one is that they have a built-in mechanism for using the elements index. A lot of times with these methods, you can't refer to an index because you don't have it. Like when you make a for loop, we had that int i variable that we could use in our logic in the for loop. Um, and this gives us a way to refer to that index. We'll see if they have a good example here. Um, yeah, and this is kind of good to talk about too because the other lambda functions we've used only had one parameter, so oftentimes you see these parentheses omitted. But since in this case we're allowed to use two parameters, we can use this index, right? So you're familiar with the fruit one that just sort of refers to each element in the collection, and then we additionally add this index variable. And remember this first part to the left of the arrow that's just like a method signature, all right? Don't be intimidated by that. When you write out a method name, you put parentheses and then you list your parameters. That's what it's doing here, same thing, okay? So we'll do something like this to go over our collection of twos and transform them. And you remember that everything to the right of the arrow is the method body, this sort of anonymous method that doesn't have a name. So yeah, we'll do our body work to the right of the arrow. So let's go back and see if we can do something with that. So we know we have a bunch of integers for ours. And um, I'm, I'm going to be chaining these methods together. You could write them out on separate lines, but it's not necessary. You can think of this chunk uh, before I call select on it as generating that collection of all twos. And then select, we're gonna transform now, right? We don't want that, this isn't our final answer. So we're gonna tell it how to modify that collection. And I'm gonna open up another set of parentheses for my parameter list, which is just like this, right? This is a method up here. It encloses parameters in parentheses. So we're gonna write our parameters here. I'm gonna use n, that's a common variable name for integers. And I'm going to use index like they did for their index, just saying what number element we're on as we iterate over the collection. It'll start at zero, then one, then two, then three, just like that. And then of course we need our little arrow uh, for the lambda, and now we can write our body. What can we do with these parameters to transform the original collection into what it ultimately needs to be? And if you remember the for loop, it's, it's really just the same thing, right? We took min, in this case, uh, the number is represented by n, and we're gonna add um, step, I'm sorry, step was the, yeah, how much we increment each time, times the index, right? Isn't that exactly what we did in the for loop body? And so you can imagine each time uh, index is gonna be incremented by one automatically for us, and it's gonna multiply it by that step of, with our example, the value of two. I'm gonna start with two, index is zero, two plus zero is two. Next time around index will be one, one times two is two, plus two is four. So you see that two, four, six, eight, ten being built up again, just like last time. So I think this is, it for us, but one more point, right? 
see if you can figure out why this wouldn't work even if I returned return right now if you think about it think about what these link methods give you back they're sort of generic collections right but what do we have to return what is the contract up here in our method they specifically want an array and so um, there's a very handy method that we've used before to array right and this will convert this generic kind of collection into specifically an integer array it knows to use integers that's the underlying type here so yeah that should do it we'll run a test on this and see what we get see if i missed anything up there okay looks good now we'll run against a larger set hopefully we have good results there i'm going to erase this comment we know we have to write code okay let's try the larger range and i see a lot of green green's a good color when you run in tests you passed all the tests so they will let us submit and I'll go ahead and do that. We'll see what kind of things, you know what we could clean up. We don't need um, print statements, right? For our final solution. And then note that, you know, I could have even not made this num elements variable, right? We could have, we could just take this whole thing, cut and paste it in here. You just gotta be careful when you try and um, get everything on one line. Sometimes it looks like garbage when you, you're trying to do too many calculations in a small space. It can be harder to read. The benefit of this is that it's very explicit. You can look at it fast and know what it's doing. So that's a judgment call on your part. If you think, oh yeah, this is dead simple. I know exactly what this is doing. Just drop it in there. You can do that. That's fine. So we'll, um, they're going to make me attempt again because of, the code was changed so that's fine I'll leave it like this with the num elements uh, local variable there and then we'll hit submit get credit for our work right cool Ooh, unlocked a new privilege have the ability to vote on beta katas nice so yeah take your time and look through some of these other ones these are fine right these guys used a for loop um, didn't, don't really care how they went for a list and then convert it to an array I liked how we did it better where we just made an array from the start like this guy did doesn't this all look very familiar yeah so yeah, that's kind of fun to look through other people's solutions. I'm sure somebody's got like a, here we go. They did a range, select, to array. There's nice one liner there. So you, people often try to go for here. Generate range, range, that's cool. This guy made like a little helper method. Cool. So yeah, um, hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions, you know what to do. Otherwise, we will keep marching. Thanks for watching.